The series is almost over, but the journey is just beginning. While some content had to be cut from YouTube due to the impending censorship that would follow, At last, we come to the final chapter in our conspiracy theory of everything. The point in which everything comes together, all of the aspects of our theory weaving into a new fabric of reality, if only we choose to see and interact with it. You see, every conspiracy theory we've discussed so far is nothing more than a reflection of something greater, the holographic demiurge. We began our journey with the demiurge, and now we must return to it, to shatter the old paradigm. We must recognize that the Demiurge is not just something that is imposed upon us, this false reality just like the Matrix, but it is a state of consciousness within us. The ancients who spoke of the Demiurge did not rail against it physically, for they understood that the powers that be were not the source of the Demiurge. They knew that rebelling against the Roman Empire would have no effect at all, just as today, rebelling against world governments or the massive corporations will do us no good but stir up karmic trouble for ourselves. No, the true mystic ancients turned their attention inwards to the mysteries within them and strove for the inner revelation of truth, knowledge, and wisdom within them. They followed the wisdom teachings set down before them from the writings attributed to Thoth to the ministries of Jesus in order to shatter the illusion of separation. In truth, the Demiurge is within us, a form of duality consciousness, a place of disconnection from ourselves and nature, inflicting upon us the belief that we are separate from one another and subject to all manner of suffering from the world around us. Certainly, this reality feels real, just as real as it was to Thomas Anderson before he met Morpheus. And it is this way for a reason, for there are lessons of duality, lessons of physicality, lessons of love, truth, and authenticity, which we must learn while we are here. This includes stepping outside of the limiting bubble of our own lives and seeing something greater. As we do so, we step into becoming active creators of our own destiny and become shapers of the world as we know it. Yet, humanity today, as we have been for thousands of years, exist within pockets of consciousness, pockets of belief and self-identity. Where a thousand years ago, we were segmented more physically and culturally, today there is a deeper segmentation mentally and emotionally as we isolate into bubbles of perception based on our search history and the algorithms that decide for us what we see and propel us each down our own paths of least resistance rather than toward each other and unity. You might call such things paradigms of belief or existence, paradigms in which people live either in minorities or majorities, where individual and communal belief systems shape the actions that people take, leading to natural outcomes as a result of those beliefs. For example, Christians who identify with Jesus returning soon will live by this belief, and this belief will dictate their actions. But those who believe the earth is flat would behave and communicate differently than if they believed the world was round, often each vehemently attacking the opposing spectrum. Yet, do such things matter when most of us spend our days entrenched in suffering, often taking it out on one another in silent, subconscious ways? If the end goal is unity, free of this duality consciousness, how do we get there, especially when conspiracy theories of the Great Reset and the implementation of a one-world government are so pervading? Is it truly possible to bring everyone together with truth, love, and authenticity? Or is at least part of humanity doomed to mental enslavement forever? As we've explored so far in great detail, 
It seems as though mental and emotional manipulation is a factor that we must watch out for, but there are a great many people who are asleep to this idea at all. They struggle through the day-to-day, -day, but due to their own connections in life, fail to look for anything more. When doctors tell them that medication is the best and only way to treat their symptoms, they take it without asking any questions, and that's the end of the story. When the media tells them to be afraid of the pandemic, they comply, and fear reigns supreme. With this existing paradigm and so many entrenched in it, do we have any hope of truly liberating ourselves in mass? More to the point, are we truly ready for such a change? In 2020, humanity collectively learned a lesson about the nature of quarantine, separating and isolating ourselves from each other for long periods of time. However, the lessons of quarantine go deeper than our physical lives, for we also saw and learned about the layers of quarantine within ourselves, between our egos and our souls, and explored just how much ability we give ourselves to ask questions and go deeper, or just accept things at a surface level. This is the reason we are discussing paradigms, because there are many paradigms out there, people asking questions and people who aren't, people who are listening to more than one source of information, learning and growing, and others who just like to talk but ultimately take no action in their lives. We may liken it to the biblical parable of the sower and the seed, which says that there are those who hear the divine word of God and those who don't. And even in those who hear it, it sounds good at first, but unless the wisdom is nurtured, the seed dies and they quickly go back to their suffering and their life without spirit. So we can see then, these paradigms go beyond belief systems they enter into and emerge from the realm of action. The invisible world and the visible world are deeply intertwined. Earlier on, we explored what might happen if humanity inherited advanced, nearly alien technology, and what would happen if we suddenly had limitless power and the freedom to travel the universe. While of course, it's easy to rebel against, say, NASA, who may or may not be withholding the truth at their highest level, it makes no difference if we're not able to look at our own behavior too and see if we have earned such a gift. Historically, human history is filled with colonization, subjugation, domination, and the enslavement of others, human, animal, and all of nature. There is no question that today, undue prejudice like racism and sexism exists even within the structures of society and one that often goes undiscussed, but is just as significant, is speciesism. You may be fascinated to watch the speciesism documentary made by a young man who attempted to prove that animal farming wasn't really all that bad, but ended up discovering that while we all believe the Holocaust ended over 70 years ago, the truth is, there is still a Holocaust going on today, and it's found in the concentration camps that we keep animals in. Chickens, cows, pigs, even fish, all of them are subjugated against their will, dominated, terrorized, and killed in mass in order to feed our growing, consumption-focused population. There was a tipping point. When you come out on the other side intellectually, it's crippling. You're immediately confronted with a holocaust that is occurring everywhere at all times and everybody you know your loved ones and people you hate everywhere they're all participating in it it's a laughable subject when you bring it up you know when your friends and family when they they think it's cute that you've decided you know to to you know that that you've taken your you know you've decided to take an interest in animal the animal issue and how in how in the world do you not see your life that you've lived up until that point when you've when you've woken up and as as inexcusable of course the moment this conversation emerges watch as some people with certain paradigms of belief will instantly rail against it for it is assumed immediately that this message is simply some sort of political or pretentious advocation for veganism. And while for this reason many turn to veganism, ask any Native American only a few hundred years ago 
who rode across the plains in groups hunting buffalo, and you will find that there are natural ways of hunting that encourage freedom for ourselves and complete respect for nature. In the paradigm of those native people, they were a part of the spirit of the land as much as the animals were. They shared space with nature, and as such, their paradigm of belief guided their actions into ways of being that were natural, sacred, and pure. Even with the technology of their time, they understood better their impact on the world around them with more clarity than many can in this later era today. At the time of this video's creation, modern animal farming is responsible for a tremendous body of disease and suffering, and the beliefs at the heart of the industry are that humans have the right to subjugate other species because we're bigger, smarter, and more capable. These beliefs are so deeply rooted in the collective unconscious that to shift these ideas in mass, it may take something big to uproot the paradigm. Even if we take a more biblical approach and observe that in Genesis, God gave humans dominion over the earth and its inhabitants, are we not still responsible to govern this world with grace, respect, and honor? We are the earth's keepers, not captors. But times have changed and the technology of but a few hundred years ago has been quickly replaced by far superior tech. And what would happen if tomorrow we suddenly gained access to the power that we discussed? Limitless energy, free to travel the universe as we desired. With the existing paradigm of collective consciousness, it may turn out the exact same way as any Iron Man movie or Avengers or superhero film. What happens when the villain gets the arc reactor or the infinity stones? It's nearly the same thing that misguided humans have done to each other and animals for millennia. They take what they want and care not of the consequences. And what would stop humanity from doing the same today? If our deep-rooted speciesism is not addressed, then what happens when humanity encounters an alien species we've never before seen? Unless they are supremely advanced and can destroy us with the flick of a wrist but choose not to, which would be very humbling, what's to stop us from imposing our will upon them? In some ways, this question is a real representation of our world today. The pace at which technology has advanced and changed our lives may have outpaced our ability to evolve the wisdom appropriate for such power. Teenage girls' mental health is at an all-time low thanks to the glamification and addictive aspects of social media. Any resource-hungry company who can manage it monitors and invades our privacy. We have gained the ability to heat the earth, demolish rainforests, and shape the land perhaps more quickly than we can learn what the consequences of such power may be. Materially, we may be advanced, but spiritually, we have a lot of catching up to do. Speaking to this emerging paradigm, in some schools of geology, archaeology, and natural sciences, a new epoch of geological time has been proposed. As you may have seen in the Sumerian epic, the Pleistocene was followed by the Holocene, beginning around 11,650 years ago before today, which is the current period we are in now. However, increasing numbers of voices have argued that humanity's impact on the environment and our ability to alter the ecosystem of our world calls for us to be in a new epoch. This is known as the Anthropocene debate and argues that the natural world has become so affected by humans that it warrants a redefinition of our place in time. As of July of 2020, the International Union of Geological Sciences hasn't officially approved the term but various start dates has been proposed for when this new paradigm of existence began, ranging from the beginning of the agricultural revolution all the way to 1945, when the fallout from the first atomic bomb altered the environment on a massive scale. Even Dr. Stephen Greer describes that many of the extraterrestrial species aren't concerned with violence at all, but rather are genuinely concerned with our attachment to violence as a species. It's not hard to envision this future where humanity has spread itself throughout the galaxy, just like in Star Wars, subjugating and controlling populations, trade, resources, 
and whole worlds all in the pursuit of profit, where Emperor Palpatine represents the darkest, vile, and most greedy parts of that which is within us, and where Luke and the Jedi then are a reflection of our hopes, purity, and dreams in our hearts. But is this a reality that we want to create? One where we spread throughout the galaxy, subjugating those who are less further along on their evolutionary path? Perhaps the ultimate conspiracy then, for this great conspiracy theory of everything, is this question. Could it be possible that all of the subjugation that we have today, the theories of human mental and emotional enslavement, while awful and terrible, is a necessary evil in order to collectively teach humanity of who we truly are and prevent us from leaving this world until we can do so responsibly? It's a strange thought, flipping the conspiracies on their head, where the Illuminati, whoever they are, could at the highest level, higher still than the elite with their pedophile rings, which are still a part of the matrix of course, be simply watching people experiencing their own darkness, making sure that we do not gain access to wield power we are not ready for? After all, the word Illuminati essentially means enlightened ones. But then again, even this is just another paradigm of belief. And in this game of life, you choose your own paradigm. We're not suggesting this is true either way, but it is something to be mindful of, as there are a great many paradoxes in existence, and we must be free to explore all of them where they lead us. And here at last we come to the heart of our conspiracy theory of everything, and this states that alongside technological progress to give us our material wealth, we must develop spiritual technology within our own bodies, which will aid us in navigating our ever-changing physical world. Only then may we truly ever advance to the next stage.